So recently, I came across this article on Medium where you have this author, Marley Kay, saying that yes, all white people are racist. And the reason I want to talk about this, I recognize it's a year old, but I still think it's relevant because a lot of people somewhat seem to agree with this. So on this website specifically, you can see that there are almost 15,000 people who came here, have an account on Medium, and gave this a clap, meaning they approve of it. And she doesn't mince any words here. She says, I need white people to understand that all white people are racist. So she says, yes, my dears, all white people are racist, all of them. This is the very beginning of the article, and she's already coming out swinging. And here, she plays the same game that Robin D'Angelo does, where she accuses you of being racist and then says, here's where you stop to cry, clutch your pearls, rant and rave aloud to tell me how wrong I am. That's the same thing Robin D'Angelo does in her whole idea of white fragility. If you disagree with her on what it means to be white and how whiteness is inherently wrong, that's just you showing your white fragility. If you disagree with Marley Kay that white people aren't racist, it's because you're clutching your pearls and you're just trying to tell black people that they're wrong. She says, you're ready to do tit for tat with me and every black person on the internet on how terrible black people are, which is a completely false dichotomy. Me disagreeing that all white people are racist does not mean that black people are terrible. Now, I would argue that this person is terrible, but that has nothing to do with her race. It has to do with the fact that she thinks all white people are racist. And it gets a lot worse than that. Just bear with me. So again, just like Robin D'Angelo and Ibram Kendi, she says that you are a product of a racist American environment. That you can't help being racist because you were born to racist parents who were raised in a white supremacist system. And the only way we can fix this is by tearing down the racist system and structures that support me as a white person, while at the same time kill Marley Kay and her sons based on flawed science crafted by flawed white and European people. So white people need to admit that they are racist so we can tear down the entire system. And if I can't do that, she won't rock with me. She won't walk with me. She can't talk with me. She can't help me. And she won't trust me. So she won't talk with any white person unless they specifically say that they are racist. That's kind of insane, isn't it? And once again, here we have a false dichotomy where she says either you're for black people or against. And no, that's not true. The problem here is that if I'm for black people in her definition, the way she defines it, that means that I have to agree with these things. I would have to necessarily agree that white people are racist and we have to tear down all the systems, which I don't agree with. But that doesn't make me against black people in, in any way. All right, now we get to the top highlight in this article where she says, you cannot fix what is broken unless you admit to yourselves you've been raised and taught by racist parents who raised you in racist systems and white spaces to give you the best chance of making it in a white world because they know how bad it was being black. And then she continues and says, I don't care where you are in the world. Everyone knows they don't want to be black because white people have taught the world black people are bad despite them needing us to survive. And once again, we have a really broad statement here that just doesn't make any sense. The world is very diverse. Now, if you want to argue about United States, that's one thing. But if you then start looking at places where white people are by far the minority, how in the world can you argue that the black people in that country or culture know that it's better to be white when they're the ones in power? It just doesn't make any sense to me. Even if you go to places like South America or Latin America, you have people who are much darker and you have people who are much whiter. And if white people, gringos as they're sometimes called, come to the United States, come from the United States rather, to go to those areas, they are sometimes targeted because of the perceived wealth that they have. In that case, is it really better to be white if you're targeted for being white? And to try and prove her point that all white people are racist, she says, just read our first constitution. If America and white men weren't racist, they would never have stipulated we black folks were property and not people. Now, let's concede that point because the three-fifths compromise was horrible and sure, it was racist. But does that mean that today all white people are racist because of what past white people did? I don't think that's how it works. 
And now here she kind of tries to scale it back a little bit, saying that all white people are racist because racism starts at home. And even if you're not raised racist, American systems make you choose sides. It's always easier and more comfortable siding with racist. That once again, racism starts at home and it helps groom the person you grow up to become. But now she's going to expand it, not just white people. She says this means these white people must realize their parents and grandparents are likely racist. This is the reason I believe most white people and people of color can't help that they are racist. They were born to become racist and taught to be racist. So as far as I am aware, this is the first time she mentions people of color being racist. But it's not being racist towards white people because she doesn't believe in reverse racism. She says that specifically. No, people of color can be racist, but only against other people of color. They can't be racist against white people. What are you thinking? So here is the second time that she's going to mention people of color. She says that white people and non-white people of color living as white who cannot acknowledge truths about how everyone's racist are saying they don't want to relinquish the power and privileges assigned to their places in the social or racial order set by white supremacy. So once again, people of color can be racist if they're trying to become white. And this is something that I'm seeing more and more often, especially when you're looking at um, certain subsets of the Latino group. For example, in the most recent election, Cubans voted for Donald Trump in fairly high numbers, and there were articles talking about how they're trying to act or be white. And that is supremely racist. Looking at a Latino group, calling them white because of what they believe? Like, that is the epitome of racism, but apparently it's okay for people like Marley Kay to say they're trying to live as if they were white to try and get this white privilege or something like that. And that, by definition, makes them racist because all white people are racist, remember? And here's where she's going to tell us how we can solve this problem. Because being racist is a choice. It's a choice to not treat all people good, well, and respectful. So here she gives us an example saying that white people can make a choice to believe black people over white people. And that apparently makes them not racist or anti-racist if you're using that definition. But don't worry, white people, because here we're told how we can fix this. We don't. Even if we are racist, we don't have to stay that way. No one has to be racist because being racist is a choice. It's a choice to not treat all people good, well, and respectful. It's a choice to center whiteness. So, for example, instead of making a decision to ignore the cries and petitions of black people and to believe, which, whatever that means, white people make a choice to believe black people over white people. Now, this obviously doesn't make any sense. You shouldn't believe someone based on their race. That isn't how it should work. If someone is making an accusation, whatever it is, you should look at the evidence, look at what they can bring forth and prove, and then believe it, depending on what they say. But this is why I have a huge issue with believe all women and now believe black people over white people. No, I'm going to believe the people who can bring forth evidence and prove what they say. You shouldn't believe white people over black people. You shouldn't believe men over women. You shouldn't believe women over men or black people over white people. None of that is how it should work. Believe the people who are telling the truth and try to sift out what the truth is. And now, in case we forgot, once again, all white people are racist. She just really wants to make sure we understand that. So now she talks about her white friends and how Obama winning and then Trump winning, white people lost their minds and that it meant that people could be openly racist in public because of Trump and all that nonsense. But here she goes completely off, off the deep end. She says, I am deleting all my white Facebook friends because they were so racist. It was painful for me, but not as painful as enduring their racism they spew day in and day out. We had some good times. They were good people, or so I thought. What I learned about what they really thought of me was that I wasn't like the rest of the blacks they hated. Now, this is obviously completely ridiculous because you can tell by her writing here that she's not friends with Trump supporters on Facebook. She just isn't because that's not the type of people that she would talk to. Remember, she said she doesn't talk to people who are racist and so she doesn't talk to white people. So the Facebook friends she deleted in the first place, I guarantee you, were not Trump supporters at all. 
And yet she's using the fact that Trump won the election to argue that it's showing that now all white people can be openly racist. And so it's acceptable or not even acceptable. It's a good thing for her to delete all of her white Facebook friends. Kind of ridiculous that you delete all these white people and then say, oh, white people are these horrible racists when you are the one who deleted Facebook friends because they were white. And then she digs the knife in a little bit deeper, saying that I stayed in a relationship with my racist white friends for too long. They did not value or respect me. In a lot of those relationships, I was their one black friend. And apparently that's bad because anyone who has one black friend can't really be trusted. Would it be better that you had no black friends, I guess? Once again, maybe we should just segregate ourselves like she did on Facebook. Now, this article goes on and on. It just keeps saying that white people are racist. So let's just highlight a few last points before we take off. So she's saying that black people aren't looking for revenge on white people. And this is a really weird phrase here. If you are the type of white person who consciously or subconsciously believes slaves now want to become the master after they are freed, you are racist. You are the epitome of our broken system. White people, you need to decolonize your mind. And this is another trick that people like Marley Kay apparently like to do, where they bring up slavery, which everyone recognizes was horrible, a horribly racist thing. And then they pretend that today is somehow still like slavery or still like Jim Crow. It's not. And then she says a little bit later that we don't want to compete with white folks, that white people are the ones who keep making everything a competition. I don't know what that means, but okay. We just want to live and free from your glare. That doesn't make sense. Free from your rule, free from white terror, and free from racism. That white people, we really need to evaluate ourselves, our attitudes about humanity, and reconsider who and what you support. It can be revealing that some things you support are very racist. And this paragraph right here is how you can argue that every white person is racist. Because if you say, for example that Donald Trump is a white supremacist, so anyone who votes for him is racist, or anyone who votes for a Republican at all is racist, because that's things they do, then you already catch a lot of white people right there. Or if you say that anyone who doesn't believe in this anti-racism ideology is racist, there's a lot more white people. So it's really easy to point to one thing, you call it racist, anyone who supports it is racist, and boom, white people equals racism. That's what Marley Kay is doing right here. And now she equates racism to alcoholism, saying that you need to admit you have a problem before you can begin your anti-racism journey. She says, while the impact of racism may be everyone's problem, the decision to be racist is an individual choice, one white and non-black people of color must decide on. So earlier, she had just mentioned people of color and, and they could be racist. But now I guess we have non-black people of color. So maybe black people can't be racist even against other black people, which I don't actually believe that she believes. This again just shows your race doesn't really matter. It matters much more what you believe and what you say. That if you say things that she disagrees with, you are by definition racist, even if you are a person of color. It doesn't really matter. Being white is just an easier way to identify that you are racist, but anyone can be racist, again, only towards other people of color. You can't be racist against white people because she says reverse racism does not exist. Now this paragraph I want to read just because it's, it's pretty funny. So she says, it took black people, Native Americans, the Hispanic Latinx coalition, witches, Wiccans, children, Germans, Europeans, and darn New Zealanders from the other side of the world to get white people to see white people are racist and that black lives did not matter to them. Finally, first off, obviously black lives do matter to everyone, basically in this country. Not supporting Black Lives Matter does not mean you think they don't matter. It means the organization as a whole is a horrible Marxist organization which believes a bunch of nonsense. So I don't support Black Lives Matter, but obviously black lives do in fact matter. But the real point of this paragraph is what the heck is she trying to say here? Talking about witches and Wiccans, 
children, Germans who already are Europeans. Like I don't, I don't understand the point of listing this, this different, all these different groups trying to bring up a point. Like where, where's the women here? I don't understand. If you have children, shouldn't you have women too? You should probably have trans people because that's really transphobic, not including them or just LGBT people in general. What is she trying to say here? So let's just finish up really quickly. The only words that matter to me right now are the ones acknowledging white people are racist and those that denounce racism. Anything else is wasted energy. And y'all folks have wasted enough time and energy being in denial about this thing. Say it now and be proud. You cannot be anti-racist until you finally admit that you are racist. And there is where the article ends. So if you want to read the whole article, check out my description because this will be included in the sources. Because to be actually anti-racist, I must admit that I am first racist, that white people themselves are racist. I had racist parents. I live in a racist worldview in a white supremacist society, and I don't agree with those things. So because I don't agree with them, that means that I have to stay racist and I can't be anti-racist. This is why being anti-racist, in my opinion, is actually not a good thing and it's not beneficial. If anti-racism means that you, as a black person, will delete all your white Facebook friends, I'm sorry, that's not helping anything. Now, there is one last thing I want to highlight here. Um, so that is that at the very beginning, I didn't quite mention this, saying that she doesn't believe there's such a thing as reverse racism. We talked about that a few times. But also, the very first sentence has a link so we can learn what racism is. So let's click on that link and see where it takes us. So that link takes us to this page where we get definitions of race and racism, coming from a 1997 book called Teaching for Diversity and Social Justice. So we can learn what race is and ethnicity, racism, individual, all those things. So let's just look at racism really quickly. So it says that it's the systemic subordination of members of targeted racial groups who have relatively little social power in the United States by members of the agent racial group who have relatively more social power. And this is effectively saying that racism is prejudice plus power. That definition is what allows Marley Kay to say that black people can't be racist, at least not against white people, that reverse racism is not a thing because they don't have any power. Now, it is interesting that it points out specifically in the United States, so I guess racism doesn't exist outside of the United States, but even disregarding that point, the definition makes no sense at all because racism is defined entirely based on geography in that case. You could take David Duke, who is arguably one of the most openly racist people in America, and put him in a country in Africa where most people are black, and he is automatically not racist because he has no social or political power anymore because white people aren't in control. I don't agree with that. If your definition of racism means that David Duke cannot be racist just by moving where he lives, it's a bad definition. Inconsistencies like that and all of these broad statements like white people are racist are why these arguments just don't make any sense. Not only that, but they're not beneficial. They're hurting society. If you have people of color growing up believing that all white people are in fact racist, don't you think that's going to impact how they respond? to white people? And if you have white people who think that all people of color think that they're racist, well, that's going to impact how they respond to people of color as well. So it just doesn't help anybody. Anyway, this is just another article showing how ridiculous people can be. And 15,000 people approve of this nonsense message. Hopefully, you're not one of them. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.